Okay, hello, it's JDS, Sport Talks videos, look at my hands are there. Uh, I haven't done one of these in a long time again. I just can't seem to get consistency with them anymore. It's just with the house and everything. So every time I made a Sport Talks video recently, the house, the fact that I only record talking from videos where I talk when no one else is in the house normally. I used to have the balls to do it with people downstairs, but I don't anymore. Um, because people in my house are not on YouTube and it's better to say it that way because they'll think I'm trying to make it a job and too much effort. Anyway, waffling on. It's just, actually this whole video will be waffling on because we're going to just talk, just have a talk about West Coast Eagles, the positions they're in at the moment, probably Liverpool, probably a little bit about Super League which is now practically fallen apart completely. I don't know too much about it because I am Australian and I only really semi bloody so, as we turn my computer on, all my um, security software is still and shit. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Australian and I only really, I guess, half. I've been on and off with soccer for years. I'm a Liverpool fan. Also, I guess, a Wimbledon fan, but um, I've never been a real continuous supporter. And when it comes to facts, I don't really know an excessive amount. I'm not going to lie. Um, I just talk about what I know if I do know stuff. And I used to consistently do these kind of videos, like around when the Emiliano Sala incident happened. That was probably at the peak of me doing Sport Talks videos, and it sort of died off then. And since then, I used to do when SBS, an Australian channel, had rights to play Premier League matches on their channel. I used to do like game reviews and stuff, the matches that I would see. Don't do that anymore. They were probably the them and the AFL version of those videos were probably the most successful videos on this channel barring the odd random game video which is blown up. I really want to do this kind of videos more though. I, I, I almost made a channel purely called Sport Talks just to focus on um, just to focus so I can feel like I have responsibility to put videos on that channel but with all the COD videos I'm putting out, which I haven't put out recently because I've been a lazy prick and not edited, I got I got like five days worth of recordings. I'm always well ahead because of work and sport gets in the way sometimes, so I may have to fall behind it like I have. Like I got five days ahead and then I literally didn't edit for five days and I sort of just kept getting them out on time. And then yesterday and probably today won't be posting much. But as of recording this, it will be up well before the video is up, but as of recording this, there is a montage going up in 40 minutes so if you want to see that it will be up on the channel right now it's called revival it's actually a bunch of old clips from a montage seven months ago um that had problems downloading and stuff and i thought i would once i could now that i could finally download them i thought i would find like a montage out of them so it's sort of like a makeshift montage in between and i wanted one more at the end of this month but let's talk about sport again um that is the whole aim of the video so eagles we are 10th. It's been a bit of a fall from grace from the start of the year. We've not won away yet. We've almost beat Bulldogs. Should have beat Bulldogs, but Buddy Cripps kicked on the man on the mark. We collapsed against St. Kilda after being 33 points up at half time and Geelong. I mean, Simpson summed up pretty easily. We were weak. We were absolutely pathetic. After the first, we led at the end of the first quarter. And then, from what I saw, it wasn't so much that we stopped trying. It's, I think, almost like we. We just lost our structure. We had too many going for the ball. I always had an extra two men out. We had three guys going for one ball, which meant if we didn't win that ball, which we often somehow didn't cleanly win the ball when it was three on one or three on two, they would always have that extra man out and they would just get out of the back. And then that sort of pushed momentum in their position, in their way. So after the after the start of the second quarter, they got a few goals and it pushed momentum their way. And we started to lose a bit of um, a bit of confidence. We panicked. You know, when you panic, if you don't control it, then it just falls apart even more. They got a few more goals, then McGovern got injured, and then we just completely lost our heads. They pulled away massively, and it just went downhill from there. It ended up being our second worst loss in history, I believe. Oh, was it? No, it wasn't. It, I think it was our second worst loss English. Second worst loss in history. It wasn't good. It was just overcommitting. It started with, in my opinion, it started with start the second quarter we were just over committing too many players to one contest which meant they had the numbers around it which meant our structure was gone forcing other players further down the field to lose their structure to make up for the extra player they had higher on the field which meant it just a domino effect down the field and then also a domino effect in the game where we lost confidence 
sorry, lost momentum, lost confidence, started to panic, and then, as I said, just slowly fell apart as we lost players as well. Um, although, honestly, at the end of the year, I think we will still end where I tipped us to that chip, but I don't know if I ever said it on the channel. I may have. I don't remember why I haven't, haven't said about this season on the channel. But for me, I was always saying 6, 7 sort of area. Maybe 5 if we're lucky, maybe 8 if we're a bit worse than I thought. That's where I thought we would finish this year. Um, at the moment, we are 10th, but we were 4th or something. And we're not going to keep losing away that much. We'll probably win at least 3 or, um, away. We're going to need more now, so we're going to need 4. I think we will still get into the finals, I would say. I may be wrong. Um, but we got plenty of good players. We got Hearn coming back this week. We've got Willie Rioli coming back later. We w Elliot Yo's. They don't get over his injury. People keep saying, oh, they got Elliot Yo to come back. They do not get over that injury. That injury is practically a retirement injury. It's the, um, I forgot what it's called. It's the, it's a degenerative thing with the groin. You basically never get over it. That's, uh, that's it. Your career is effectively over to any major extent with that injury normally. Because even if you do come back, you tend to hurt it again and you just slowly snowballs from there and you and end up retiring. But um, as I said, we've still got Hearn, Willie Rioli to come back. Nick Nat's lost a bit of form after a few games, but he's never been quite the same. He doesn't fly like he used to. He doesn't have the, I know he's a bigger lad now, he's a lot bigger in the chest, but he doesn't have the energy and the movement he used to do. He's always at the bottom of the pack, not the top of the pack. Like he is the guy he used to jump on before his ACL injuries. Now he's sitting beneath them most of the time. He did it once in the, the Third game of the season, I think it was, maybe fourth. He flew, took the mark. I was like, okay, yes, that's the knickknack we know and love. And then the next week's where the form started to drop, and I just he isn't, doesn't seem to want to fly like he used to. His ruck tap and disposal of the ball was still absolutely elite. And his tap down to himself and kick up forward, all the little things he does, he still does. But it's just the general round the play stuff, the knickknack, non ruckman stuff. So, how do I explain it? When he's in the pack and he's in the possession, he's very good at getting to the ball and handling out. But stuff where he's got, actually got to go work to do it, that he used to do, he has to move out of his way to really get there, except for maybe tackling a player out of a contest, he doesn't seem to really want to put in the effort. Like, he used to come out of nowhere and take a mark from the back of the pack, or... Like, he's got... If you look at highlights of the, like, top 50 best marks on the AFL YouTube, there's three or four of them in there. That's the sort of shit he used to do almost consistently, take big pack marks. But he just doesn't seem to want to go out of his way to to get the mark. Um, hopefully he can get over it or at least find some way to make up for those lost attributes. Something new, something better, I don't know. Um, what else? There's plenty of other stuff to talk about. I just need to think about what to talk about. We've got the big derby on the weekend. Not you bloody East, Eastern States Australians calling it a derby. It's a derby. D-E-R-B-Y. Derby, not Derby. If it was an A, then it would be Derby. Anyway, we got the Der Derby. I'm gonna say Derby. We got the Derby against Fremantle. Um, I'm quietly nervous, but I'm confident. Like inside, I'm like, oh shit, we could lose this. But I'm confident we're still gonna win. Like we've got the big ruckman over there. And they got the better midfield at the moment, purely through the way of Monday and that five because we've got an injured Luke Shaw, as we said, an injured, practically out. Yo. Um, someone else in the midfield was injured, I believe. I forgot who it was. There was someone else, I'm pretty sure. Um, so, like, we're relying, and it's actually done well so far this year, we're relying on Redden lately to lift a lot. And people like Xavier O'Neill. Um, but there's plays we could, like, I'm not sure, understanding why we still play Langdon, to be honest. I do not see any positives in Langdon, really. He was a bit better on Geelong in the first quarter. But I'm not really seeing many positive. Duggan's been a lot better this year, but he just collapsed. I'm starting to, me and my dad, are, we watch footy together, me and my dad are starting to think that maybe he's a bit of a fair weather player. He plays well when we play well. And then when we need someone to lift for us, he just falls apart. And I thought it was, Yo was a bit like that himself, I thought. I thought when we were good, or was it at least a close game, he'd be really good. But when we were sort of falling apart and we need someone to give us that kick back in the gear, he would not be the player to do it. He would always just sit back, he would look like he didn't want to be there, he would walk around, not get too much effort unless the ball was like, when the ball was there, every player just goes through if it's just sitting in front of him. But it would like, he would give up on chasing players. Gaff as well, he just gives up on chasing players. Um, 
we need more players like like a Shepard or a Hearn where it is 100% no matter what time of the game it is. If we're 40 behind with 10 minutes to go or we're 100 in front, in front with 4 seconds to go, he will give his all at all times, both of those players. Same with like McGovern, he'll be out for a while now with his groin injury as well. He's redone his groin, we think. It was in a, um, he was actually standing on the mark. Just hands up, jumped, and then grabbed his groin straight away afterwards. And we knew, oh, I knew anyway. He knew he was gone for a while. You could see in his face, it was like, fuck. Because he missed, I think it was six weeks last time, and they're saying five, six again this time. Um, obviously, Shuey's out with his hamstring at the moment. But lucky, as I said, lucky Hearn's back. But I don't. We need. Um, I think we need a bit of rejuvenation in the back line, to be honest. Barras, he still does a good shift. But with McGovern, like he can take the big mark, but he's been dropping more lately, and he needs to be a hold of the big marks to keep his position. Because it's not a. He is a natural full forward. That's why he came into the league as a full forward. But we adapted him to play back line because he's a very good intercept mark. And his disposal with his kicks always been a bit loopy and gets a few creates a few problems like it did at stages in the start of the second quarter against Geelong. He made a few mistakes which helped them get a few chances of goal early on. Then he got injured, but that wasn't really his fault. Um, so yeah, he's he needs to clean up his disposal by foot. Um, and Barras, there's so many chances with Barras where he punches that he should mark. And there's just something about Barash. He's a good player, but he just seems a bit, not pace-wise, but just a bit slow. It seems like his brain just doesn't tick over very quickly when he's got the ball. It looks like he looks up, and then it's like a waffle player who's just got, or other leagues, like VFL or SAFL or whatever. Other leagues as well. When they come into the Premier, the Premier League, this doesn't stop it, Josh. When they come into the AFL for the first time, they look a bit slow. Give me a second. Okay, don't mind, that's just a bang. I didn't know what it was, so I thought, oh, I may have been working on the house. I don't want to have all the banging in the background because the house is currently having an addition and stuff. But, um, what was I saying? Yeah, when a waffle player comes in in the AFL, they pick up the ball, and when it plays in the AFL, the main difference, really, they're a slightly cleaner, but the main difference is their speed, their brain can take over, find the possession faster. Waffle players take that extra quarter of a second to find the player and I feel like Barras never really came out of that mindset. He always feels like he has the ball and it takes him a split second longer than everyone else to decide where to go. Um, and we need players like Darling and stuff to lift. Obviously Oscar Allen and Liam Ryan are going to be an absolutely dominant force over the next second I think for us. They will be, when we get in trouble, when we start to need a rebuild or so, they will be the players who will hold us in a higher position because those two forwards are so accurate like if every time Oscar Allen if he ever drops a mark which he doesn't really is bloody sticky hands but if he ever drops a mark Liam Ryan will be down there and we've got a superstar big forward and a superstar small forward which is a perfect combination because the time that the big forward happens to mess up the small forward's there to pick up the ball and go and that's a perfect building block for a forward line especially when you've got another small forward like Willie Riola who's probably I would say when he got suspended, he was better than Liam Ryan. But two years have passed now. We've not really seen Willie Rioli, so we don't really know what he's like now. But I do not think that he is to the level of Liam Ryan anymore. Liam Ryan was still the up-and-coming guy, and Rioli was sort of like the more solidified guy. But he will still be more like a... Like a lacrosse sort of role, but better than lacrosse. Which is weird to say, because lacrosse was one of the, could be one of our greatest small forwards we ever had up there with material and stuff, but after he broke his arm, it just sort of never really got back into the swing of things. Like, he was a dead eye before his arm, and then he was sort of dodgy after his arm. I think he had the knee injury as well. He has all his careers. We've had bad problems with good players of ours having injuries, which preventing them from playing, um, especially through their peak. Like, Nick Nat was just hit, or I think he had probably a year into his peak. Because your peaks normally as a player in sport, 26 to 30 and we've had a habit of players like Lacroix, players like Nat Nui getting injured just before or dead in the middle of their peak so we missed two or three years of them being at their best. Um, but yeah, I think we will work our way into the finals and we will probably end like a 7-6 sort of position as I thought at the start of the year. I was starting to hope we might be a bit higher 
but we will be making up the numbers of the finals and we may push depending how clutch we are but we have a bad habit of getting in the finals and then not doing very well I've talked a lot about footy there's plenty of other things I could talk about but I could go on for hours about footy so I'm going to move on in future these sort of videos will probably be done the separate path like I would do the footy one as one video assuming I make more videos but um, I'm going to try to I don't. I just can't really get consistent with these videos but I'm going to try to keep making sport talks videos um, but yeah, so in future, Eagles video would be its own video, and the Liverpool video would be its own video, Super League video would be its own video, um, and any other sport I might do, like tennis, or any other sport I've ever really done, and more maybe. Um, but with soccer, Liverpool were looking real dodgy, we still don't have Van Dijk back. Yoss is back, but he made a difference early, like first two games, and then it sort of like joined the way back to how we were playing before. Um, we just don't look confident. Like, I'm not really watching games because it's on at 1 o'clock and I don't have pay Optus however much you need to pay him to watch the games. But from what I've seen, we just don't look like we've got any confidence. Like, we do our normal attack, 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 but there seems to be nothing coming from it. And then, because we got practically no defenders that are actually defenders, like, we bought two makeshift guys to fill the hole, but they're still not really up to it. So then we just concede a goal and then it's a draw or a loss or sometimes we scrape a win. It's not been a good season. We're down in sixth and we probably will just make Euros, which is kind of crazy to think that we were the second, was it the biggest, it was second or the biggest gap at top last year. Last season we won by either the second biggest margin or the biggest margin. I don't remember which it was. Um, and we weren't far off the most points ever either. I think we were... What were, we, I think, were we 98 or something? We, we had a lot of points. The most is 100 and... Was it 100 101 by Man City? Whatever it was. But it's weird to think the massive fall from guess we've had. I guess we have, we have had bad injuries. We've had both major defenders injured. Major forwards injured. Firmino dropped form. Then because we were playing Fabinho and Henderson in defence, we were then playing third string midfielders. And then we had... Um, even mid-string midfielders like um, maybe Cater, I don't know, Arnold and all that were injured. So we were basically playing a second to third string team in positions, in certain positions. And then Alisson got injured and Adrian was in bad form. And then we played Keller a little bit because we just thought he was better than Adrian, that's a young kid and keeper. And it's just not been a good season for us. Hopefully it can all just settle down. But it was coming. We had had years without bad injury problems at Liverpool. It was coming. Um, it just all came at once. Which is often what happens when you don't have injuries for ages, it all just sort of just falls apart at once and all the injuries happen in one big clump. So hopefully next year we can hold on to people, um, big players, and maybe make a few signings, but I don't think we really need them, especially in midfield. I don't know why, Thiago would end up being a good player, but well, people saying it's a bit of a flop, I don't know from what I've seen, it seemed like it's been pretty good for us. But we didn't need him, really. Like, at least sell someone if you're going to buy Thiago. Like, we've got so many midfielders. Like, Nevi Keita is third string midfielder in terms of who he selects. I think he should be second string midfielder. But in terms of who Klopp selects, he is third string midfielder from what I can see. He doesn't play very often. Nevi Keita is a good player. We bought him for 16 million from Leipzig. Otherwise, I thought we should play him more. But there's a reason Klopp's there and I'm not. Um... But yeah, I, I don't really know what to say to be honest. I came in here, I probably should have come with some sort of idea of what I'm going to say, which is what I normally do. This is just spur of the moment. I have a chance to record. I want to talk about something. So I'm going to talk. Um, we just need a. I think we need to kick up the arse, really. I'm glad we pulled out of the, the Super League. I'm not going to talk, talk too much about the Super League. Obviously, we were going to happen. Now we're going to make a Super League with all the major clubs and then. I think it was Man City pulled out first, then all the rest of the Premier League club barring Chelsea, then Chelsea pulled out a few hours later. And then, I'm not sure it's still in, but it's practically just fallen apart, completely collapsed now. It's back to business as usual. And it was always, I thought it was scary, but I thought that was gonna happen. I thought, considering the out rule in the first few hours of the announcement of teams joining, I had a feeling that it would fall apart and we'd just be back to business as usual. But it'd be interesting to see what kind of um, punishment is given. Some people are saying there won't be any punishment because they won't have the balls to do it. I don't know. I think probably 10 point, um, 10 point, 
penalty for either this season or start of the next and no Europa for any of the teams involved. Um, and I would suggest most of those clubs, if not all of those clubs, kick out their owners because they've tried to ruin, like not ruin, they've tried to completely reshape and change the sport against the fans' will and what basically every fan of soccer wanted to keep saying the same sort of pattern they wanted, like where the idea is of soccer, or sorry, football, is where, it is soccer by the way, but I'd say football because it's easier than arguing with people. But the idea is where I can create a team tomorrow, assuming I was in Europe, I could create a team tomorrow and any, and my team could theoretically become as big as PSG or become as big as Liverpool or become as big as Man City, Barcelona. That is what they love about football. It's that some random guy can make a club and theoretically create it into some super club. But the Super League was seemingly going to destroy that entire theory and the entire that entire way football it is. And there was always going to be outrage, but it seemed like at the start, it seemed like they would not care because they were always going to make their money out of the people who weren't really fans anyway because it looked like it was going the way of Liverpool, Barcelona maybe played in, say, California and a bunch of random Californians who just want to see these guys play because it's uh, a fancy thing to do and there's lots of money and you look rich if you do so. And then they'll go and they would buy shit from the shops, which if they just had the fans of the, fans of the teams come and play, then they would already have their club shirts and scarves and shit and there would probably be one or two of them that would go but if it was people from California it's probably gonna be the whole family so that's double that's triple double the money in people who are buying the tickets for non-fans as the fans and they'll probably have higher ticket prices for non-fans because people are willing to spend more it's just a one-time thing for fans it's more than a one-time thing they want to go consistently so if they spend too much it's and there was just so much more money in people who weren't proper fans watching the game. It looked like they just wouldn't care. Luckily, that kind of contradicts what I was saying before. But luckily, the fans, especially Chelsea, they sat out and stopped, stopped the team being able to get into the game. Luckily, the fans rebelled so much that eventually all the clubs pulled out. Um, I'm still just waffling on now. I don't really know what to talk about. So this has been JDS. Thank God Super League has happened. I need the Eagles to really get their asses in the gear. Listen to Simpson. Stop being weak. Um, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.